Mentioned Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and a lot of people will think of Dollywood or outlet malls or miles of little amusement parks. But there's a heritage in that little town that's much older than tourism, and you can experience it, even take some home at a place called the Old Mill Square. Cruise the parkway in Pigeon Forge and you'll pass up a plethora of modern day entertainment attractions for kids and their parents. Exit at traffic light number seven though and you can experience Smoky Mountain Live almost 200 years ago. In many ways we're part of a uh, working museum. That's the whole idea behind the Old Mill Square with its magnificent centerpiece. A working water powered mill built back in 1830, now on the register of historic places. Naturally, it was our first stop on our visit to the square. And on this day, Chuck Childers was busy turning corn into meal to sell locally and worldwide. I would have been considered an apprentice back in the old days because I've only been here a couple years and you can't possibly learn all this in just two years. The first process is taking your bags, opening them all by hand and dumping it into the chute here. Okay. Now I've already opened these, so all we have to do is take it and dump it in. Can I try that? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Just dump it in. Just dump it over and okay. you're good to go. It's heavy. Pick it up from there you go. We'll make a miller out of you. Yeah. <laughs> from here, the corn travels up an elevator of sorts for a progression that remains unchanged over time. It's going all the way up to the third floor, and up on the third floor, it gets divided into different bins. We can send it wherever we want to, and then it comes all the way back down here into the hopper. You can see it feeding down by gravity, and now it's feeding down into our stones where it'll be ground into our cornmeal. These granite stones are only the second pair needed since the mill opened in 1830. The originals are parked outside. There's actually two stones that are here. On the top, you see this one moving. This is called the runner stone. Underneath it, there's a flat stone just like this one that doesn't move, that's called the bed stone. What happens is the corn feeds down this top stone, grinds the corn on the bed stone, then of course it shoots out. Now each of these stones weigh about 2,500 pounds. Wow. Chuck and the crew keep the mill working five days a week, grinding meal, grits, and different kinds of flour. On a busy day, they might fill six or 700 bags. Of course, it has to be weighed. Once we have the appropriate weight, then we have to tie it. So what we do is we cinch the top with our fingers, and then we use a piece of string and we tie it with what we call a miller's knot. Now this is why they would have done it 200 years ago. You just kind of flip it around, you make a hole with one finger, go back into the hole, and you pull it tight, cinch in it, and it's ready to go. Ready to go worldwide as well as next door in the old mill store. That's where I caught up with Donna Huffer. She promotes the mill as a sustainable destination. We're all about the heritage and culture of the Smoky Mountains and the way of life. And so we're self-sustainable because we grind our own corn, we make our own breads that we use in the restaurants, we throw our own pottery that we use in the restaurants. So we're trying to be sustainable, you know. So that's what we're all about here. Across the street, another mountain tradition lives on with the making of heirloom pottery. During World War II, Douglas Ferguson moved here and became a renowned potter whose works were a benchmark of Smoky Mountain craftsmanship. Today in his memory, Ferguson's methods are demonstrated daily by artisans who follow in his footsteps. Visitors are welcome to sit down and watch. And of course, shop for pottery that was made here according to the old time traditions of the studio. Okay, how would you like to enjoy some of the pottery and some of the food products from the mill in one location? Well, you can here at the Pottery House Cafe, and it's in the former home of one of Pigeon Forge's most famous craftsmen. This building was part of the Ferguson home beginning in the early 1950s. Nowadays in the kitchen, mill products are turned into freshly baked bread and crust for quiche dishes and other offerings that feed a steady flow of customers. The pottery from next door is put to good use as well. We use all the pottery for all of our dishes and the mill products we use for all of our breading, 
and with our breads that we make. Wow, does it make a difference to have fresh flour like that? Oh bread? yeah, it's a big difference. Uh, it's, uh, I was really surprised when I first started with how big of a difference it really, really makes. It's, it's very unique. The Square has an even larger restaurant across the street that also uses straight from the mill baking products. There are several other stores that comprise the Old Mill Square, all carrying the same theme, pleasing today's guests while preserving yesterday's traditions and heritage. We've tried to keep as much history as we can with him and the mill, and uh, you know that's kind of what we're all about here, trying to preserve the way of life in the Smoky Mountains.